Welcome to a new episode of Stevens Week, your weekly update on marketing and technology. In this episode, I will talk about a breakthrough of Google's DeepMind, and I will talk about a smart acquisition of Facebook. Stay tuned and enjoy this episode, everyone. DeepMind from Google has another breakthrough. Um, DeepMind is the AI division of Google, and now they launched Alpha Fault, which is an AI that is capable of predicting the 3D shape of a protein based on its amino acid structures. Um, they were part of a contest where 100 teams were trying to predict the 3D shape of proteins. The average result of the human teams that was that they were right in 10% of the cases. The alpha fault team, the machine, was right in more than 60% of the cases. Usually it takes scientists up to years and sometimes decades to predict that uh, 3D shape of a protein. Now, alpha fault can do it in minutes and sometimes in hours. And this is a game changer. Uh, this will speed up the development of medication in the next few years. This is a real turnaround, a game changer in biology. And this is really cool because DeepMind became popular by playing board games, right? Remember, they won from um, the, the world champion in Go with their AlphaGo algorithm. Now they have a breakthrough that will change healthcare forever. This week, Facebook acquired a company called Customer with a K, not with a C, um, for $1 billion. And Customer is a software platform that brings together different conversations that people have with a certain brand and then give all that data to their customer service agents so that they can give an answer that is in line with the history and the context of that customer and that specific brand. So the idea of customer is cool. I think that's what people want. It's like what we call the omni-channel customer service where all the conversations happen or are centralized in one database so that you don't have to repeat yourself all the time as a customer. So it's a cool company. Uh, why did Facebook buy it? Uh, I think this is a step into becoming the platform that they want to be, become a business platform where they offer more services to businesses. And imagine that Facebook could use that technology on a platform like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, and that they link customer service agents to those platforms and combining all the other data that is available about those customers, that could potentially change the way that we do customer service and could create some sort of a paying service uh, from Facebook to business clients to really boost customer experience on their platform. It's always been a dream of Mark Zuckerberg that customer service happens on his platforms, and this acquisition is a significant step forward in achieving that. There was a study by Group M this week that was published, and the results showed that 51% of the ad spent in the United States was going to digital channels. And this is the first time in human history that advertisers are spending more on digital channels than on offline channels. And another study was published this week by Work, and they are looking into the intentions of advertisers into 2021. And there it becomes clear that this evolution will continue to, to move in the same direction. And what really you know, took my attention was that advertisers are becoming more and more interested in specific online channels that are really targeted to capture people for a longer time and to make sure that you can get their attention for a longer time. And then I'm talking about specific video formats or uh, podcasts. Those kind of channels show the largest increase in ad spend for next year. And the more traditional offline channels, um, yeah, the prediction is that there will be a significant decrease in advertising spend on those. So we're gonna see the consequences of the big digital jump forward that we had in 2020, you know, that will now result in a different kind of advertising world. This is becoming clear. Do you remember the Libra project of Facebook where they had the intention to create a mainstream cryptocurrency and made sure that we could pay um, through Facebook Messenger with Libra? Um, they had a lot of pushback, as you know, and they're going to rebrand this initiative now. It's going to be called DM. Uh, a new day, basically, is what they want to say. Many of the uh, early partners have pulled back and now they're going to launch a more limited system. They're going to launch it, uh, a cryptocurrency probably early next year and it's going to be called the DM dollar and probably it will be backed by the dollar, not a uh, whole set of currencies, but just the dollar. And they're not going for a mainstream cryptocurrency in the beginning. They will make sure that they can use or that the DM dollar can be used um, by fintechs to facilitate certain financial transactions. So it's a much narrower scope. 
um, and they hope that this will be a first start and they hope that they will be able to 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 make this happen and by this new name and the new organization they hope that they're not going to be linked as much to facebook anymore and hopefully this will create the trust um, for both governments and users to start working with uh, with the diem dollar it's going to be very fascinating to see how this evolves and if this is a small beginning that will eventually become something mainstream or if it will remain a niche cryptocurrency we will find out in the next few years all right guys this was my weekly update i hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it please like the video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel and i wish you a wonderful weekend and i hope to see you again next week Bye bye